really good of you. My name is Seb Stewart and it's a real pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, and thank you Marion. Uh, Marion's been a huge supporter uh, of Q Youth in Nelson and uh, I don't think we'd be where we are if it wasn't for Marion. I'm here to introduce the QSA Network Aotearoa to all of you. Um, joining me tonight we have Kathleen McLivan who is a nationally renowned researcher. We have Jack Trollove and uh, Tommy Hamilton from Rainbow Youth. We also have Marnie Mitchell and Tabby Bersley. Have I forgotten anyone? So we're, going, we're just going to roll through these, these, these wonderful speakers seamlessly. And to begin with, I'd like to present the QSA model to you. So QSA Network Aotearoa, probably going to be based out of Wellington. So first of all, it's good to know where these things come from. The influence, or the main influence, is the GSA Network in America. Can you just indicate if you've heard of the GSA Network in America? Okay, so actually fewer of you than I thought. That's awesome. Uh, so I've got... I've basically taken some information off their website so that you can see just how successful this, this network is. It started in California and in 98 uh, it had 40 clubs and it, since that time it's grown to over 850 clubs. It brought the GS, uh, GSA clubs to over 53% of all public high schools, which is an extraordinary achievement. If we could have 53% of all of the New Zealand high schools, with Queer Straight Alliance groups supporting young people, you can, I don't need to tell you how many going to be. Currently, I believe there are about 15 QSA groups in New Zealand, around five in Auckland, five in Nelson, and a few others. Uh, <clears throat> so they've provided training and support to over 10,000 youth activists and organisers across the state. They have these wonderful things like, you know, some of you will know the, the hui that we have, Kazam, um, the QU hui and so forth. They have lots of hui, lots of opportunities to come together as QSA leaders and to develop themselves and, and therefore obviously help others. Over 30,000 student members, this is California, um, and as you can see they've played, they've played roles in changing legislation, they've played roles in changing the school environment so that they're safer for young people. And they've developed a unique, replicable model of youth-led social justice, organising to end homophobia and transphobia in schools. They are a unique model, and we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. They've done it all, so we can... We've actually spoken to them, and they're real happy for us to use all of their resources, um, basically copy and paste, which is great. Obviously, with an Aotearoa feel. The second influence, as Marion stated, was, is actually Q Youth and <laughs> Q Youth grew out of NAGS, so it became New Zealand's first constitutionally queer straight alliance community group. Um, which means that heterosexual youth have the same rights, the same voting power, um, the same opportunities as queer students, or sorry, queer youth. Which is really important and has actually um, completely transformed what Q Youth does in the community and, and uh, young people's lives. Um, so we've got seven secondary schools, five of these already have QSA groups and the sixth is starting soon and it's going to be in Golden Bay which is this tiny speck of a place. Um, so our current uh, youth chair of Q Youth is actually a heterosexual um, uh, young lady called Eleanor Strathern who's the leader of the girls group um, and two of the five school QSA leaders um, identify as heterosexual and the others are queer. So we've got this wonderful combination of um, queers and straights working alongside each other to make society more inclusive for everybody. And, you know, we, Q Youth, we call um, Q Youth uh, that we're modelling the inclusive society. Um, then we've got some stuff about what Q Youth does, and uh, this is going to influence or potentially influence how the QSA network runs. So for example, Q Youth has Pride Week every year and all of the schools organize, organize activities and they come together in the community as well. So this would be a great model where the whole country, all of the schools, the QSAs and our schools could run Pride Week at the same time and Facebook each other and network. Um, <coughs> we've got great funding for Q Youth. I think one of the reasons for that is that we're a QSA. Um, funders love the idea. QSA and um, we'll 
more readily, I believe, fund. Um, so currently I'm a Vodafone World of Difference recipient, which has been amazing and wonderful. And we're, we've also got a close partnership with Nelson City Council. Uh, we get funding from the Ministry of Youth Development and Country, so on and so forth. And we're only two years old, so you know, it's really amazing. <coughs> so the QSA um, Network Aotearoa has already really been achieving some great successes. It just hasn't had a name or an identity as such. Two of them have been the Pink Shirt Day Letter Writing Campaign, which we worked on in association with um, Rainbow Youth and Ministry, oh, sorry, Mental Health Foundation, which led to having a really cool meeting with John Key. Um, I was thinking of laugh at that. Uh, and the next thing, the next thing was the High School Diversity Tour. Did any of you notice the High School Diversity Tour with Blake Skeller up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I <only> noticed. <laughs> So Blake and I visited 18 schools from Kaitaia College down to the two um, boys college and girls college in Invercargill and lots of others in between. Blake gave really powerful assembly talks about his own journey through school of being bullied and then coming out as a gay Olympian. Um, and I had the opportunity to spend time with the guidance counsellors and the students to promote the uh, QSA model. And six of the 18 schools um, have stated that they want to start a QSA group, so we'll follow up on that. So one of the things that I think would be great for QSA Network Aotearoa is to have um, these types of school visits from people who are well known in our community. Um, I think a gay or black would be good. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so two purposes. Um, we're on a mission. And this is the mission statement of the GSA network in, um, in America. So it's worth looking at this. The Gay Straight Alliance Network is a youth leadership organisation that connects school-based Gay Straight Alliances to each other and community resources through peer support, leadership, development and training. GSA Network supports young people in starting, strengthening and sustaining GSAs and builds the capacity of GSAs to create safe environments in schools for students to support each other and learn about homophobia, transphobia and other oppressions. It educates the school community about homophobia, transphobia, gender identity and sexual orientation issues and fights discrimination, harassment and violence in schools. It is my wholehearted belief that the very best way to change the um, culture in a school is to change it from within and from within the student body, which is why the QSA is so effective. I say QSA, they say GSA. <laughs> I think that changes the things. So here's some results. This is from some um, research that was done in America. So students in California schools with a GSA club, now they don't need to attend the GSA club, they just need to have a GSA club. <coughs> so they don't need to attend the QSA to experience the benefits of the QSA. Here are the benefits. Less harassment based on sexual orientation. Less harassment based on gender nonconformity. More likely to be safe at school. More likely to feel school is safe by LGBT students and gender nonconforming students. Reporting stronger youth resilience factors such as connections with supportive adults at school and I guess I would say connections with one another. It's one of the most um, isolating things for a queer student in school is that they just feel connected to each other and uh, these groups are great um, opportunities for connection. Um, and the clubs can successfully decrease harassment and increase school safety for LGBTQIT um, <laughs> students. So these are great results and this is why um, there's some of us whose bellies are filled with fire and passion to get this, um, this model out there. There's a couple of quotes, just to lighten it up. Rainbow Youth's PowerPoint is really cool, by the way. So don't worry, you're getting the colour up soon. Um, so the first quote, I think, is an important one because it's, it's coming from a school principal and, and basically it echoes those um, benefits that were seen in the research. Um, that um, WAGS has done significant work to better inform students about gender issues of difference and is how they create an inclusive culture. Well, you couldn't have a better outcome than that. And um, those other quotes down below were, um, this one here was from uh, guidance counselor at one of the schools that 
late night visitors. Uh, we got lots of really cool quotes and really excellent feedback um, from the tour, from um, principals, from students. Basically, everybody thought that it was really important. I mean, it's, it is significant that, um, you know, when Blake was talking, that was the first time in many, many of those schools that anybody had said in a sentence, I am gay, you know, in that school, out loud to everyone. Huge impact with that. Um, in the future, I am lesbian, I am intersex, I am genderqueer. You know, these are words that, that young people in schools need to hear because it validates their own identities. And this is the last slide. Um, <clears throat> so, so what's coming up? This is at the moment a good idea and um, we've got a meeting tomorrow with, um, with the Mental Health Foundation. We're looking, looking at developing really strategic and strong partnerships with organisations that already have impact um, in schools like family planning and others. Um, developing a trust, creating a reference group if you're interested in being part of a reference group, please let me know. Um, developing strategic partnerships, just talked about that, and then getting the funding and making this thing a reality. Um, and all of that's going to happen in the next six months. So, um, yeah, I know you're like, really? It's like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so that's an overview of the QSA Network in Aotearoa. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to present this to you and to be here with you today. Um, and next up we have Kathleen Thank you. <laughs>